How much do you charge? What's your commission? How do you respond to that? Stay tuned. What's up everybody, BC, welcome back to another video. Um, I wanted to take a step back and dive into some objections. I know people always ask me about that stuff. I have a gazillion responses. I wanted to create something simple for people uh, in regards to you being in any industry. Obviously, for those of you who know me and follow me, I'm in real estate, so I may give some real estate examples. However, if you pick um, some of the, the way I frame the questions and the way I put these patterns together, it's very simple for you to emulate this in any industry. You just have to be able to understand the root and the datum and then apply it to where it is that you're going to apply, okay? Now, before we get into the actual dialogue, why do we not answer what our price is or our commission up front? Well, you're not in a position to negotiate, right? They don't understand what your value is. You have to look at it from the other side. The customer doesn't know how to choose the best rep. They, their criteria for choosing the best rep or salesperson or whatever it is that you wanna say is based on how they view that process, which in most cases is flawed, right? So in real estate, for example, they're gonna look for what sounds the best. So the realtor who will quote them the highest price and the lowest fee, because logically that makes sense. In their mind, all realtors are the same, all salespeople are the same. Why would they think any, any, any differently, right? So you have to know this coming into these uh, dialogues and situations and understand that you cannot give that direct answer because it's not that you're dodging the question, it's you're do doing them a disservice actually and yourself. Number one, you're not giving yourself a fair shot, but number two, you're allowing them to choose on their flawed criterion, right? So in order for you to get around that, you're gonna have to be able to structure it better. So when they ask me, you know, what's your commission? One response I give is, that's a great question. Obviously, when we get together, uh, the commission, the price, and all the other things we're gonna discuss. When are you available to meet? Or, if I'm not that far yet in the conversation and they just ask me straight off the bat, great question, obviously, that's something we're, dis we're gonna discuss later, and then I keep asking them the questions of whatever it is I'm gonna ask on the script, right? Now, if somebody presses and keep, well, what's your commission, what's your commission? They say, look, you know, Mr. Client, I'm not in a position to negotiate my commission. Do you know why? This is the key is you're always asking the questions. The one who's asking questions is the one who's in control. Okay. So before I even continue, you need to be okay with somebody walking away if you don't give them their fee or your fee. Okay. We have to start having some sort of standard and not just bend over backwards and be so desperate for business and whatever it is that we sell that we just blurt out. Oh, I'm the, because uh, then you become the yes man and no one's going to work with you. Okay. People want to work with somebody who's in control, who's professional and who's an expert, not someone who's a yes man and just uh, is at every little begging call, okay? It's like they have you by a leash. They can just ask you any question. Remember, the one who asks questions is the one who's in control. So I'm not in a position to negotiate my commission. Do you know why? Well, you don't know anything about me or what I do. So let's do this. Let me meet with you or if you sell over the phone, right? This is for the people who sell on the phone. Let's chat for 10 minutes. Let me share with you what makes us different than everybody else. Then you can make an honest assessment about what I charge in our fee. Then you can make an educated decision, which is what you want to make, correct? You want to make the best decision, don't you? Pretty simple, okay? So again, that's just two or three quick ones. You have to understand something, guys. When you give your commission up front or your fee or whatever it is that you charge without them knowing anything about you, you're shooting yourself in the foot, okay? Then, unless you're the Walmart of your industry, meaning you're the competitor who really wants to underprice everything and that's your model, cool, then tell people, because that's your strategy. But if you're not, like me and many other people, then you wanna make sure that there's a little bit of value and they know something about you beforehand. Otherwise, in their mind, remember what I said in the beginning, you're a commodity, you're the same as everybody else. So until you differentiate yourself, from everybody else, you're the same. So how could they make an honest assessment if they think that you're the same as everybody else? You get, you really get what I'm saying here. This is the whole root of this. Because some people will say, well, you're dodging the question. No, you're not. This is, this is a skill-based game to win. I'm just gonna answer the question. And again, you're doing them a disservice because what if you are the best? What if what you offer them and your package is actually the best for them, but they don't choose you because you just gave them your fee or your commission and you never get a shot? Some of you sell over the phone. Some of you sell at the appointment like me and my team. Okay. Whatever it is, defer it for that. Okay. Those are just a couple quick responses. So um, another option that you have is having different packages. One thing that we say in real estate, and you can say if you charge some sort of commission to say, well, in the state of blank, fill in the state, uh, 
commission fee is 100% negotiable. You are aware of that, right? Great. So when we, if we get to that point of actually sitting down and discussing seriously, considering working together, then definitely know that it's negotiable. And then I ask the next question. Okay. This is also the key. Remember, you have to ask the questions. You don't linger on their questions. You, you either present the questions and they answer and you keep doing that, or they throw a question, you answer it, and then you throw another question. That way you maintain control. Okay. Fees is hundred percent negotiable. Here's another one for you. Well, we actually offer uh, a couple packages. Okay. And I'm sure you, you would like some options, right? Great. Well, when we get together and we get to that point, we have three, four or five insert how many options you have for you to choose from. And all our customers love that. And then you ask the next question, right? Simple stuff, right? And again, I'm going to add on to this. I gave you three, four or five, whatever dialogues. It's not the words. It's your delivery of it and then your ability to take back control and ask the question. The mind, when you're talking to the customer, can only focus on one thing. So when you answer it and you move on to the next question, very rarely is someone going to stop you and keep badgering you about the previous question. That's rare. And if you keep getting that, you're doing something wrong or people are smelling weakness on you or you're communicating something negative that's causing them to call you out. Okay? This is another tip that I can give everybody is when you're getting a repeat of something all the time, it's not them, it's you. Now, if this is happening to you one out of a hundred times, you're good. Understand that you're not going to make all the sales. Most people making calls and put, putting stuff on YouTube, myself included, you don't see the shit. You don't see when we get cussed out. You don't see when we get hung up on, which is the majority of the time. You just see the one win where we get the, the sale or the appointment and you think that every fucking call is supposed to go that way. It's not. Okay. So no, that, you need to look at yourself and say, what can I improve? And that's a mindset that I have for all this stuff. And I did in the beginning and I still have now. What, what can I do differently? If I keep getting the same complaint about commission, well, I'm doing something wrong. Either I'm, I'm, my voice and tonality is implying that I'm not worth it. Okay. Maybe I'm not demonstrating enough value in my dialogues and I need to up that and demonstrate a little bit more value. So they understand when we get to the part of the fee, right? Maybe something else is off. Right? If I'm doing this in person, maybe my body language is off. Maybe my eye contact is off. Maybe my handshake was weak. Maybe I'm not smiling enough. Maybe my, I don't have enough enthusiasm. There's something there that's causing that. So this causes you to look to and say, well, okay, what can I change here? What can I adjust? So again, you can even come up with your own dialogues, but it's just your delivery of it and everything else. It's not, it's not going to change and it never will change, but you need to understand the reason. That's why I explained it at the beginning and I'm touching on it again. It's a disservice to them, it's a disservice to you, and it's an incorrect way for them to choose. So if there's a customer watching this, okay, the cheapest isn't always the best, and many of you have been burned because you went the cheapest route instead of actually giving everybody a fair shot, and then you ended up getting a poor quality home remodel, a contractor, or whatever it is, just because you went with the cheapest bid. Your mindset was, I'm gonna get four bids and I'll go with the cheapest one, okay? And you can even use that as a dialogue. Let's say they complain because you gave your fee and they complain, oh man, that's too high. These other people offered me less. Well, Mr. Mr. Customer, uh, tell me, have you ever been in a situation where you got multiple bids for anything, right? Whether big or small. And you went with the cheapest one and they didn't deliver. Has that ever happened to you? Well, of course. Yeah, it's happened to me too, right? Did it with a paint job, whatever. Insert whatever you want there. Right? So, so we've learned, and so have you, from direct experience that the cheapest isn't always necessarily the best, is it? Boom, now you're in. And again, all I'm using is a real life scenario and using it against them, quote. So if you're the consumer watching this, give us a fair shot, then make the choice. If you see everybody and what they offer and you hear them out and the cheapest one is still the best, by all means, go, because then you're making the right choice. But to choose purely based on the fee without knowing anything else is foolish. And again, what I just told you right now, the last 20 seconds, you can use that in a dialogue. Come on, guys. Simple stuff. What you need to start doing is piecing it together and think a little bit more advanced. The objection handlers on paper are great, but you really need to start stepping it up to take it to the next level if you really want to start creating leaps and bounds between you and the competition. Because other people aren't dedicated to the craft. You think they are, but they're not. You think they're hammering the phones and going out there and going door to door and doing all that other stuff at a high level, they're not, and they're not doing it consistently. This is where you can come and clean up, okay? With that said, I'll end it here. Uh, two quick announcements, Supreme Being, my podcast, make sure that you check it out. Um, it, it's huge, it's growing. I'll leave the link in the description. It's on every major platform. 
Secondly, Modern Success, my personal coaching and mentorship program for the world. One of the focuses is this, sales. If you thought this video was even pretty good, which you'll get on that program in regards to sales is 10 levels above this shit, okay? So get your ass on it because you know it's gonna help you and it will help you make more money, bottom line, period, end of story. I don't care what industry you're in or what you do. We have people from all walks of life in the program, all right? Also, I'm gonna put in the pinned comment a link to the summit for all the realtors that we're doing in uh, September in Dallas. Get on the waiting list. We still don't have all the details, but if you get on the waiting list before we release the details, you will get a free bonus training, okay? Like the video if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell icon and subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment below. Let me know if there's any other objections you'd like for me to cover, and uh, I will. All right, Team BC, peace.